I'm ranking the top 3 VR games for the Quest 3, from least to most popular. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which game you should be playing right now. But are the most popular games actually the best? For example, Moonrider is a fantastic rhythm game with thousands of songs to choose from. Creeper. Oh man. The only issue I and others had was the boxes felt a little too high up. That was fun, but oh my gosh, is this tiring. It is a great Beat Saber alternative, I gotta say. Just to be on the web and to be completely free, it's not even that bad. I'm ranking this an A tier. Next is AMXR, which is a fast-paced 5v5 multiplayer shooter. And since Pavlov is 20 bucks now, this is the next best thing. And for some reason, the grenades in this game were so overpowered. Get the grenade! Come on, let's go! I got two kills with a grenade. Honestly, playing it, it kind of brought me back years ago and I used to play Onward. I just had so much fun. Yeah, it's not my favorite. I'm giving this a B tier. Up next is Finest of Freddy's Sister Location, which is a remake of the original FNAF 5 game. I played this on PC and it scared me on PC, but this is VR. This is even scarier. Oh, jeez. This is made so well, by the way. I gotta say, this game terrified me. What is that? There's something there? Go! Let's go! I had so much fun playing this, and honestly, I couldn't find any issues with it. So, I'm giving this the first S tier in this video. And even though this is such a good game, there are even better games coming up. In fact, the last game I'm showing you guys is going to be the Hidden Gem. It's the best game you've never heard of, so make sure to keep watching. But Physics Playground isn't one of them. It's not as good as Bone Lab, of course, but, you know, it's free. For some reason, this is actually pretty popular, but it just feels so janky to play. And for me, that's the most important thing for a game like this. So, I'm gonna give this a C tier. Next is Discovery which takes obvious inspiration from a certain popular game. It's just your average sandbox game. Whoa, whoa, okay, this is pretty cool. But there is one redeeming factor. Going to the third person mode was a pretty cool feature to have. My issue was that the movement is horrible. Look at me run. You have to just teleport around. Overall, it's a pretty disappointing game and the goats are terrifying. I'm giving it a C tier. Next is Noclip, a backrooms game where you have to escape tons of levels without getting caught by the monster. You have to swing your arms to move, which really immerses you. Honestly, this game is terrifying. <laughs> I had a lot of fun playing it, so I'm gonna put this game in the A tier. In Harvest VR, you get to live the life of a farmer and join the countryside. There's a wide array of activities for you to do on your farm, but sometimes the tools are a bit glitchy. It's constantly being worked on. For example, right now, they have a Christmas event going on, but again, this suffered from a few glitches. Oh, wait, you're stuck here? Bro, I'm stuck. I really like the variety of things to do, but the glitches hold it back, so I'm gonna rank this at B tier. Hypo is a battle royale game where you use a bow and arrow not only to kill players, but also to move around. This all sounds really cool in theory, but falls completely flat. No one plays this game. I think I'm like the only one playing this. I don't think I saw a single real player in the entire time I played. And I can see why, because this game is just so badly made. Also, if you actually want to have a chance of playing with real people, then the game forces you to pay. The only one that I can actually play, I, I have to pay for. This game, I mean, it has potential, but like if no one's playing it, it kind of makes it pointless. You know, it's weird that I couldn't find any real players because our hidden gem is less popular, but I never had any of these issues while we're playing. Overall, this game sucks, F tier. Be Speedway is an arcade racing game set in a small city where you get to race on a bunch of different tracks for the best finish time. The game also has an option where you can change the gears yourself if you want. The only problem I had was... I, I don't know how to drive a manual, but I'll figure it out. But as you can see, I learned pretty quickly. Whoa. Okay. No. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Hey. Overall, it's a decent game, but there was this one glitch where my hand got stuck and I couldn't move the wheel, which is annoying to deal with. It's a pretty basic game, so I'm going to rank this a B. Ultimax is a Rocket League inspired game where you play as a robot with rocket powered fist. Now your goal is to hit the ball into the net to score points and beat your opponents. Come on, yes, let's go. When I first started, I thought I'd be able to fly around in my mech, but I was disappointed to find out everyone's just forced to waddle around. The rockets also fire so quickly, making it super hard to control them. You can definitely improve skill-wise, but there's not a lot of room for creativity. It definitely has potential to be an A tier game, but as of right now, I'm gonna give this a B tier. Cards and Tinkers is your standard multiplayer card game. And I got bored pretty quickly since the mechanics didn't feel too deep. It's definitely a polished game, but I'm just not a huge fan of card games to be Begin with. So I'm ranking it C tier. Hyperdash is a fast paced Halo like shooter where you get to run and gun around the map in various different game modes. I really enjoyed my time playing this game. It's a super easy game to start and the gameplay is extremely addictive. It didn't take me long to load into the game so I could tell that all the players were actually real people. It's a great game for new players since it's super fast paced unlike other VR shooters like AMXR. Although it's not just for new players, it's clearly a skill based game and has a unique movie mechanic that you can improve at. There's tons of different maps, guns, and game modes for you to play. I I had a lot of fun playing this and I'm confident in giving this game an S tier. Blast On is a fast paced shooter game where you're always on the move. You'll be dueling with other players in an epic slow motion bullet hell, collecting awesome weapons, customizing your loadout, and dodging incoming fire by moving your whole body. This is made by the same studio 
studio that also made Ultimax. But where I felt they were too ambitious with that game, Glass On is just super simple and fun to play. The concept works really well for VR and is a great workout. I am sweating right now. <laughs> it is quite the workout. I'm like moving a lot. Since it is so simple, there's a limit on how much you can actually do in this game and it could get repetitive after a while. But I still had tons of fun, so I'm ranking it an A tier. In bait, you live the life of a fisherman catching fish in eight different lakes and oceans. You can customize and choose your own rods, reels, and bobbers. You can also invite your friends to come with you. I was expecting more of a realistic fishing game, but it ended up feeling more like a mobile game than anything else. The gameplay was extremely straightforward and it got repetitive very quickly. They also tried to force in this storyline and it just took away from the gameplay, honestly. I don't care about the story, honestly. I just want to fish. Overall, it just bored me while playing. C tier. In Epic Roller Coaster, you get to ride and explore different roller coaster tracks. It has a different couple game modes, which gives this game of some replay value. But the only problem is you have to pay to play those other levels. This game is a scam. All you get is a couple free levels, and if you run the rest of the game, it hides it behind a paywall. I mean, this could have been a fun game for new players in VR, but it's not even worth showing them since there are much better games they could play, and also just much better experiences as well. Even though it is a super popular game, it deserves an F tier. Meta Horizon is the definition of the metaverse. You can create, explore, meet new people in different worlds. This is meant to be Mark Zuckerberg's vision for the future, but right now, it serves as a worst made rec room, which we'll be talking about later in this video. And most of these worlds are just used for marketing purposes. However, it's consistently improving and every time I play, things get better. But right now, there just isn't enough content. Everything is very polished and well made, but there's just nothing to do right now. So I'm giving this a C tier. Vegas Infinite is a virtual casino game where you get the most authentic experience of being a gambling addict without actually going broke. Although if you really wanted to, the game does allow you to buy coins. You can play multiple different games to earn coins, which can be spent on cool cosmetics to show everyone you're better than them. The game is constantly being updated and has changed a lot from the last time I played it. Although I haven't liked all the changes. There's no common hub anymore. The games seem more glitchy and everyone is just a lot more serious now. <laughs> I think they like kicked you. <laughs> last time I gave this an S tier, but compared to the other games in this list, it's more like an A tier game now. Population 1 is everything Hybo wants to be and more. It's an actual battle royale game with real people and real weapons. It's like Fortnite, but in VR. And just like in Fortnite, you can also build walls to protect yourself. The devs are clearly passionate about this game as it receives frequent updates. And for the longest time, this game actually costed $30, but now it's free to play. And since I bought the game when it cost money, they gift me some really cool skins. But honestly, I don't even regret spending money on this game. And for a free game, it's an absolute steal. I had so much fun playing it, and I actually ended up getting a win on my first game. This game was already great with a battle royale on its own, but now with the creative mode and all the hangouts, making this game extremely replayable, it's getting an S tier without a doubt. Gym class is the top basketball VR game. Play and win games to earn coins you can use to customize your avatar. The game has a steep learning curve and ton of opportunity for you to improve. It's just a good basketball game. I mean, there's nothing special. So it's getting a B tier. In Gorilla Tag, you run, jump, and climb like a gorilla in various maps. You can play tag or infection mode, but the basic premise is you're either chasing or you're running away from other players. It's mainly full of younger kids, which means you're either running into new players who have absolutely no idea what they're doing, or just complete sweats who will destroy you without mercy. Either way, it's still a great community and most of the people you run into are super nice people. I would say it's a little overrated, but honestly, there isn't much I can fault the game for. I'm giving it a solid A tier. Broken is a social hangout with tons of worlds you can play with friends. Similar to Roblox, there's an endless amount of content ranging from dodgeball, paintball, battle royale, laser tag, horror, and hangouts. Rec Room is great. Now, besides the avatar being a little too basic, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There are a lot of kids, but it feels like there aren't as many toxic ones as there used to be. Honestly, some of them can be pretty funny at times. Let's go to the door! Go to the kitchen and make me a sandwich! Go, go! So there's nothing holding me back from giving this an S tier. VR Chat is probably one of the most iconic VR games ever. It's a social hangout game where you can talk to all types of people. From strange to annoying, the people you'll find in VR Chat will definitely keep you from being bored. The character customization is unlimited. You can look for avatars in different worlds or even create your own using a 3D software. There seem to be a lot less kids here, but everyone's a lot weirder. Huh? It honestly depends on the world, but honestly, the vibe of most of these servers are just really weird. I just don't find it fun or interesting to stand around and have strange and boring conversations with people I'll never meet again. That's why I'm giving this game a C tier. Roblox just released its own VR port where you can play various different games with your friends. For the trailers, I was expecting to be a brand new experience since they made it feel like it would be a completely different thing from the main Roblox PC and mobile experience. But no, it's literally just a port for the quest. You can still get shown games you can't even play in VR. And the games that you can play are clearly not built well for VR. 
car. They're just very clunky with bad controls, and they're just not fun to play, if I'm being honest. It feels more like a fan-made port than an official release. This deserves an F tier. Now, this is our hidden gem. No one talks about this game, but I think it's absolute gold. It plays similar to Hyper Dash, but a little more competitive. The grapple mechanic makes the movement super fun. You can use it to move across a map at high speeds, making the game super fast-paced. I found the gameplay super addictive, and it's definitely a game I would come back to play in the future. Even though this game isn't as well known, it definitely deserves to stand with the rest of the S tier games in this list. If you want to see what would happen if you pour water on the Quest 2, then watch this video to find out.